How is everybody doing this wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, middle of the night, whenever you're watching this? Um, welcome to another math video. Today we're going to be talking about solving sales tax and TIP. Um, pretty powerful things to do in the world. You're going to be doing a lot of this throughout your life, so we might as well understand what it means and make sure we're doing either paying the right sales tax or how to calculate a tip. So we're giving that person enough money for their service um, and we're not giving them too much because we don't understand tax and tax. Right. Um, what gives you the power to walk through walls? A door. Duh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that may not be that funny, but it's informational. That's how you get through the walls. There's a door. All right, so today we're going to estimate and solve contextual problems that require computation of sales tax and tip. All right, so we're working on sales tax and tip, and we're going to be using that thingy thing. Make sure you go watch that video if you have not, because it is a big part of everything we do here at Tall Tal's wonderful shop of math, because it relates to everything proportional reasoning. Okay, tax. Let's do a little vocabulary. Tax, that's something that is added to a price of a particular goods and services usually as a percentage of the purchase price. A lot of times the government adds taxes to things that we purchase and those help pay for a lot of goods and services that we get outside of that actual event. But for example, I paid 7% 7 sales tax on the shoes I bought. So you go see the shoes on the wall and it says $55. You go to the register and pay and you paid $63. Well, it's because you paid some form of sales tax on top of that. Tip. When you go to restaurants and other type of providers, sometimes it's a um, an Uber driver or it's a at a hotel, someone might be really taking care of and moving your bags around for you. We we pay tips to different types of service providers. It's additional amount of money. Um, most common, we do it at restaurants. You go to the restaurant with your family or by yourself, whatever, and at the end of it, you're they give you a they deliver the bill to you and you give them a little bit of extra money on top. Um, and there's like standards of what you pay. Um, how much tip you should leave depending on what kind of service you got. Um, so this one says I left an 18% tip for the waiter at the restaurant. So whatever the uh, value was, they added 18% on top so that that waiter would get a little extra money based on their service. Um, and remember in the service industry, um, waiters and waitresses really count on this money because they don't get as big an hourly wage. Most of their money comes through tips. Okay. So in order to get to understand how we figure out tax and tip, let's just do a real quick review of percent of a number. There's a video out there about percent of a number. There's a video out there about proportional relationships. There's a video out there about the thingy thing. All very powerful for this video. And hopefully you've done enough of the videos that this is just super easy for you. All right, so proportions can be used to represent percent problems as follows. Remember, so for tax, a percent we're gonna add on top. For a tip, a per, or I'm sorry, a tax, a percent we have to pay on top for like the government. And for tip, a percent extra we're going to pay to this person. So percent is part of a whole value, right? A percent, 20% of the whole cost, 14% of the pizza, 13% of the whole classroom. That percent is a part. 100, percents are always out of 100. So the whole value of the scenario would just simply be 100. So percent over 100 is the first side of our proportional relationship or the initial ratio for our thingy thing. So if we understand proportional relationships, which we do, the rate has to go up on the top and bottom at the same amount. They have to proportionally go up. They have to scale up and down at the same rate. So if we know the initial ratio, we know how proportional relationship works, we can use the most amazing tool in the world called the thingy thing. Bum, bum, bum. So let's review the thingy thing. All right, the thingy thing method simply says, that the key to doing any types of problems like this, markups, discounts, tax, tips, any proportional relationship type of problem is knowing that percent and 100 represent one side of the proportion and that is our initial ratio. So first thing we're gonna do is set up our proportion. On one side, we're gonna have percent over 100 and on the other side, it will be our tax tip, markup, discount, any of those type of things we do when it, we're thinking of consumer mass, math. Step two, we're gonna cross multiply. Step three, we're gonna set them equal to each other Step four, we're gonna divide both sides by the coefficient. That's just a reminder, we're gonna do it in these problems, okay? So finding sales tax and tip. When we're finding this, we need to know how they fit into our thingy thing. Remember, the one side is pretty simple, percent over 100. The other side is gonna be based on a whole and a part, right? The whole 
is the original cost, right? Whatever you go to, when you buy a bunch of stuff in a store, all that adds up to an original cost. Sales tax comes on top of that. When you go to a restaurant, all of it adds up to all your food and drinks add up to a certain cost. The tip is what goes on, on top of that. So the, the original cost, the cost of everything before we add uh, tax or tip is the whole. Tax and tip become the discount, all right? So we know this one side is percent over 100. The part can be the tip or the part can be the sales tax or in another video that part could have been the markup or the part could have been the discount. Those are part of the whole price. And the whole would be the original cost. Where did we, what are we starting with before we do things? All right, and so now that we know that, we can um, fill in the proportion also known as the thingy thing. So let's do an example problem. Beth purchased $22 worth of groceries. So she's at the grocery store and she's put all this stuff in her cart and it's $22 worth of groceries. The sales tax rate is 8%. How much tax did she pay? Okay, so we have to set up our thingy thing. All right, so on the part side, we're gonna do percent over a whole, which is percent over 100. On the part side, we know we're trying to find the tax. So tax is the part and the whole is the original price. So now we have all that, let's fill in the values. Let's look for some clues. Detectives, our sales rate, our sales tax rate is 8%. So eight goes where the percent sign goes. Uh, Beth purchased $22 worth of groceries. That looks like the original cost of the groceries before we did anything to it. We're trying to solve the tax. That's the unknown. So we change our tax into a variable and we could use T, you could use any letter. I change it into a T just to make it a little easier to understand. Now we can take that, that a proportion because step one is to set up a proportion and we just did that. Here's our proportion. And we use the thingy thing. What's step two is to cross multiply. So we take eight times 22 and we get 176, okay? Eight times 22 is 176. And then we take 100 times T and we get 100 times T equals 100 T, all right? So step three says, take those two answers and set them equal to each other, okay? So we got 176 equals 100 T. And finally, we divide both sides by the coefficient. In this situation, we have 100 T, the 100 is our coefficient. So we're gonna divide both sides by our 100. The 100 divided by 100 cancels out to be one. So we know that T is on one side. And when you do 176 divided by 100, you get $1.76. And we know that T represented, what did T represent for us? It represented the tax. So that's what we were trying to solve. So the sales tax is $1.76. Thingy thing. It just works, right? It just works. So we're going to do that exact same problem, but at the end of it, we're going to ask a different question. What is the total cost of her groceries? So last time we just wanted to know what was the sales tax we paid, which was $1.76. So it's still the exact same problem, right? It's the same scenario. We set up our thingy thing the same way. We're going to cross multiply. We're going to divide. We're going to set them equal to each other. We're going to divide by the coefficient because we still have to find out what the tax was, okay? So if your problem looked like this, you still have to figure out what the tax is. And we did, we figured out that the tax was $1.76. The problem is they're not asking, asking us for the uh, tax, they're asking us for the total cost. So we have to take our original cost, which was $22, all right? And we have to take our tax, which we found out to be $1.76, and we have to add them together to see how much we are actually going to pay, okay? So we take our original cost, which was 22 smackers. We take our sales tax, which was $1.76, speaking rhythmically, don't know why. So the tax goes on top of it, right? Which means we add it to it. And that means the total that we're gonna pay when we go to the grocery, when we go up to pay for our groceries is gonna be $23.76. Got it? Guess what? Finding tips is exactly the same thing, okay? We're gonna have our thingy thing part over a whole equals part over a whole. Okay, in this case, the part is the tip because we're trying to find what Aria is paying for a tip. So this one says Aria's dinner costs $75. Aria had a big meal. She tips the wait staff 20%, okay? Which means on top of that, the wait staff did a great job and she feels like she's gonna pay 20% on top of it so that her waiter or waitress gets a little extra money to help them throughout their, um, to help pay their bills and whatever they need to do with it. So then we go look for clues, okay? So what is our percent? It's 20, so that goes where the percent sign went. $75 was the cost of the meal. That's the original cost, all right? And we're trying to add the tip to the, we're trying to figure out what our tip is. So the tip is our unknown. 
So now we have our proportion. 20 over 100 equals T over 75. 20 over 100 equals T over 75. So step one, check. We set it up correctly. Step two, cross multiply. We take 20 times 75 and we get 1,500. We take 100 times T and we get 100 T. Now remember, I'm not just doing this real quickly in my head. I am using a calculator or I'm on the side. If you're not allowed to use a calculator, I'm using paper and pencil to calculate these. Okay, but after step two, we set those two answers equal to each other. So we take 1,500 equals 100 T. And the final step, same as always on the thingy thing, divide both sides by the coefficient. 100 is touching the T, so that's our coefficient. We know that 100 divided by 100 cancels out to just give us T on one side, and 1,500 divided by 100 is 15. So this T equals 15 tells us that T, which we said was the tip, we know that this waitress is going to get $15 on top. Aria is going to get Aria is going to give $15 to the wait staff on top for all the wonderful work that they did for them. So now we're going to take that same problem and we're going to give it a different question. Same dinner cost 75, she still wants to tip 20%. Now, how much does Aria pay in all for her meal, okay? In all for a meal. So, we decide to set up a proportion, which is 20 over 100 equals T over 75. So this is the same things. We use the same clues. We're still going to find the tax. Or I'm sorry, we're still going to find the tip. We said that T will stand for tip this time because once we find the tip, guess what we can do? We can add it to the cost of the dinner to see what the cost is and all. All right, so we go through the whole process that we just did and we figured out, yep, the tip is $15. Except this question says, how much does she pay in all? So we got to make sure we're actually answering the question. So we take the original cost which was $75. We take the, ten, uh, the tip, I'm sorry, this should say tip. We take the tip and we add it to it. Okay, so $75 for the uh, dinner, $15 was the tip that we decided to give our, uh, the wait staff. And so what am I paying in all? I'm paying $90, that's an expensive meal. But that would be the fee. We're making sure we're answering the question correctly. This one wanted the whole value and the last one just wanted the tip. So Aria pays $90 in all for her meal. So let's fill in some blanks. A fee added to a product when you purchase it, typically the government gets this money, is the tax. And when you go to a place and someone's doing in the service industry, it's common for you to give a waiter or waitress a tip. Okay, that's the, th the additional amount that you give on top of your bill. Solving tax and tips can easily be solved by using the thingy thang, thingy thang, thingy thang. Um, let's see what that one. I'm going to try a different one here. Um, what goes up and down, but does not move stairs.